Hello, I'm Andy King. I'm the technical editor of Good Woodworking magazine and I'm going to show you how to do sharpening saws for getwoodworking.com. Okay, uh, we're going to be sharpening this six tooth per inch crosscut saw. Uh, the idea being is you lock it into your saw chops and you want to set it so it's not too high up like that because as you file there's too much flex. There are a few things you need to understand. First off, if you're doing it on an old saw, it's beaten up, there's more work to be done on certain saws than on others. But first off, you don't want to set against the set. And if you've got an old saw that you need to look at and you can't see it if the set's gone right off and you can't see because of the profile of the teeth where it was originally, if it's a cross cut saw, by dropping the file in and just wiggling it and what it'll do it will find its own way around now that way there if you try and push it that way you're pushing against the set you can feel it you can hear it creaking you can also feel it trying to jump back out you just wiggle it it'll find its own way now you look at that tooth there and you know full well that it's, got, it's pointing that way and that's the front of the saw there so the, the tooth directly behind it that one there is the one that's set away from you so you can work out immediately by looking at that tooth that that's an away tooth that is where the file, uh, the, the actual saw set, has to push that tooth away. If you had it the other way around and tried to push that back to you, chances are you'll push against the set, and if it's brittle, it'll snap off. That's a bad thing. You don't want that to happen. So you can drop it into another one, there for argument's sakes, wiggle it again, and it will find its way forward that way, which means that tooth now is facing away from me. That means that is the way the tooth have got to be set. So therefore, when you set the saw, you know full well you can actually set the right direction. Because if you start setting those teeth that are facing towards you, on an old saw especially, they, start, they can be a little bit brittle and you can snap them off. And on a new saw, you can still get the same problem. So you always want to make sure that you're setting the right direction with the, with the, the set of the saws it was before. The other thing to understand is when you do that sort of thing, is when you do your topping, you can top the saw off if it's really bad, all, all your teeth are all over the place. If it doesn't need it, you can just do the straight dressing stage. So you can look down the saw and have a look and see how bad it is. And also look at the teeth and see how bad it is as well. And if it needs to be done, it's just a straight matter of a flat file. So depending on how much work needs to be done on the saw, you can see here, probably with a shine off the camera, I don't know if you can, but you can see that these have already been worked earlier. But here, you can see these tops have been taken off. And the principle is basically, is you put the flat file on the top now you can get a guide for this, but I just tend to just rest it up against there. You're looking to keep that 90 degrees to the top of the saw teeth. And you just pull that over the top. And all you're looking to do is look at the top of all the teeth and make sure that every single one of them has been hit by the file. Now you might find that if you've got a really lot of wonky teeth, some are lower than others, you might find that a lot of the teeth are, are quite well filed away and a couple might be still low. In that instance, you can leave them low, to be honest. If it's only one or two, you don't want to get too carried away and have to file off all your saw. So you can bring them back in the next time you do any work on your saw, you can bring those back. So again, just give it a quite, two or three, depending on how bad the saw is. And then you can see, that's pretty well all the teeth are now been topped out. There's one there, hasn't been touched. The rest are all pretty good. So that's one low tooth there, which can be contended with, and maybe one or two down there. So those aren't going to be a problem. I can work those out at a later date. Now the other thing is as well, is setting. Now it, when you set the saw, you're looking to see how much work you've got to do first. So you can actually, if it's not too much work to do, you're just doing a little redress and sharpen. You can set first, but if it's in such a bad state, you've got to bring the teeth back into uniformity, and which is basically what's called dressing the teeth, then you don't want to start setting too, too early in, in the game because you've got to get your teeth back where they should be. So it's, it's a horses for courses type thing. You, you really need to know, know what you need to be doing. So if you look at that then as being a saw that needs just a, a basic sharpen up, you could bring it back in now, do a bit of dressing on it, and then set. I'll be happy enough to do that. The other thing you need to be aware of is the right file for the job. Now, there's a selection of files here, they're all a bit, we've seen better days, some of these I think, because I've had them quite a while. 
but you need to understand which size file to use for a saw. There's all different names for them, slims, extra slims, tapers, double tapers, that sort of stuff, double enders, but the simple matter is, is when you drop the file into the tooth, you need to make sure that when it sits in, the top of the tooth doesn't sit above halfway up the file. What you're looking to achieve is when you file, as that starts to get blunt, you can then rotate the file and give yourself two fresh edges. If it's gone too far up, you've already worn the faces on this other side, so you don't get as much use out of the file. But on the other hand, it doesn't need to be too big. So if you've got a file that's too far up, it's, it's too way down on, onto the, the halfway line, what you find then is on the files themselves is the actual bottom of the file there. You can see that that's quite round on that one. This one is quite sharp. And as they get bigger, the bottom of the file tends to be quite round. And on a smaller tooth, use too big a file, you'll end up with a round on the bottom of the gullet. It won't take it out cleanly. So what you'll end up with then is, is teeth that are sort of like that. They'll be scallop rather than sharp in the bottom. So the principle is now you can either dress it, straightforward rip file dressing, which will then bring everything back in. But bearing in mind, you need to be aware of where your set was. So if you can see set on the saw, you can live with that and, and do it. Now, personally, I get to a stage now where I, I don't often do dressing first. I'll actually uh, file as I'm going because of the way I do it. I do it different to the rest of the world, to put it perfectly honest. So looking at a file, which I know is right, which is this one, I'm getting an edge which looks decent enough. And again, you've got to get yourself some good files. You don't want to be scrimping on the files. It's like anything else. You, you buy well and it works well. So the principle is, in, if you're just dressing, you'd be filing on a rip file, but this is a cross-cut saw. Now, the normal way to file is every away tooth is to work the lot all the way back to the handle, spin the saw, work all the way back to the handle again. So you're doing the front of every tooth on the way. Now, I was taught differently. I find it a lot easier, which I'll show you now, which is, in some respects, doesn't do a file much good. And on a bigger tooth, you'll, you'll hear it and see it more. But I was taught to basically file every tooth as you go. Okay. okay, so the principle is, as you work back, you're looking at each individual tooth. Now, you see me do that just to check, and I'm looking for the burr to make sure that is burr and not top left on the tooth itself. Also, it's not a good check, is with the file, when that's in there, if your eyesight's good enough, of course, and the light's good, you can actually look, because the file, you're looking at this tooth here, so what you can see is when the file sits up against there, if there is any top left in it, what you'll see is along what would be the, 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 the pitch of the tooth coming back up that way, if the top's still on it, it will have a lot of a little flat on the top still. If it's a straight line, if your eyesight's good enough to see it, then you'll see that you've, you've got that tooth where you need to be. And likewise, on the opposite tooth facing the other direction. So as you're looking, you're, you're looking at the teeth, the shape to bring them back in, but you're also looking at the back of the file, and that also gives you an indication that if there is any top left in, it needs to be taken out. So it's a little, there's a couple of little, little tweaks there, like I say, just check, check them with your finger, and feeling if, if it's burr or if it's, um, if it's actually top left on. And also, as I say, by checking the file, as you're filing, you can actually see if you've gone flat, because it will take the whole flat of the tooth out. So when you look through as well, you can see that every single one's out. You can see the shine's gone right the way through on each tooth as you come up. What you're doing now, you're working the front and back of each tooth, which then gives you the opportunity to work each tooth as you go. And also, as you look down, you can see you've got consistency on the front of each tooth and on the back. So the rake of the tooth is still going uniformly all the way down. The only thing you need to be aware of if you do it this way is you'll find that if you're a novice at it and you need a bit more practice, you might find that you'll start filing a little bit too that way or a little bit too that way. So you might find your, your actual angle of your, your file as you come both ways will wiggle that way. But it's it's the biggest problem you tend to find with, with saws when you look at them is the shape of the tooth. You'll find them like that, like that, like that, and you'll find them all the way down any saw. They're all over the place. You know, they're like crocodile's teeth. They're everywhere. So you're looking to get a uniformity in the tooth. And by doing it this way, you can read every single top and look at every one and think, okay, I'm looking now on these. That one there shows a small top. That one shows a bigger top there, as does that one. But it means these two teeth are slightly lower than that one there. So 
I'm gonna have to work a little bit more on that one to bring it in and bring those up to the same height. If I look at those tops and work in the back and front of each tooth, I know I need to push on the file one particular way there, pull on the other one, and on other ones where you've got a, a, a tooth pattern like those two there, which are identical, you can just put pressure right away through the gullet. You don't need to push on the file or pull on the file. And that way then you're looking to bring everything back in where it should be. So I'll just do a few here and you'll, you'll be able to hopefully see what, I, what I'm trying to achieve. I'll find the angle I need to be at, as you should do. I'll set my file where I need to be and look into stroke away from where it is. And I'm looking, as I said, to take the back of this tooth off. So I'm pushing the file that way. Now, this is faced towards me. So you'll hear, you'll hear it squeak because I'm, I'm basically filing the back of the tooth of a tooth that's facing towards me. So I'm filing against the set. And when I move on to the other one, I'm still doing the same thing. I'm still filing a tooth that's facing towards me because I've skipped the middle tooth. I don't want to work that one as yet, but I'm pulling the file towards me now and also pushing it down. So the gullet is dropping at the same time. If I don't push the file at the same time, what I'll end up doing is pulling a long gullet either side of the tooth, which will then leave that one a skinny little tooth in the middle and these will be deeper on the outside face. So I'm looking to work them individually by pulling where it needs. And what I'm looking to do is each top now is roughly about the same size. So now I can just tweak these back in by just nipping that file along where it needs to be. So it's just a matter of just bringing them in where they should be. And also by looking, sticking my finger behind, I can see if, there's, if that's burr or actually a little bit of top left on. And once you get to the stage where you're in the right neck of the woods and the tops are coming in uniform, you just lightly go back in and dress those tops back off now. So the initial work is the shaping and dressing of the tooth to get it where you want it. And then you just come back in and just file them back in. So you can actually just, as you look across them, you can see that each tooth is now uniform and each gullet is uniform as well. When you look on the top, you can see you've got the tooth, which is the way tooth, has a point going that way. And the tooth facing the other way has a point going that way as well. So you've now created that cross cut pattern by just alternating the file as you go. But you've also brought in every single tooth as you go. So you only work from the one end. You can work all the way back along the saw, looking at each individual tooth as you go to see which one needs the work by looking at the one in front and the one behind or maybe even a couple behind if there's a lot of work to be done on two or three at any one space. You can actually just push or pull the file as you need to, just remembering to push on down to make sure the gullet drops uniformly at the same time. So you can actually go and right away through like that. And then you get to the stage where the saw is now dressed and it's actually sharp as well, but it still needs a set if it needs to be in that situation. And if you are doing a lot of work to dress a saw, the chances are it will need to be set. Now, because it's been cross cut, you don't have to worry anymore about setting against the teeth or anything because you can see already by looking at the tooth, you know full well that because the file has gone in that way and you filed that tooth there, that's your away tooth. So you know full well it starts there, 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 and you can actually start setting every other tooth now all the way back, spin and do every other tooth on the way back again. Another little tip, if you, if you choose to do it the way I do, is if you're looking to think I'm losing that angle on the top of the, the saw chops there, there's some little lines that are raked at the file angle. You can put them all the way down and likewise on the other side, do them that way down as well. So that as you're filing, you can look at the file and think, well, okay, I'm on the right line and I can see what I'm doing and bring it in that way. You do get used to it after a while. You know, I've been doing it sort of 30 years now, so I'm, I'm sort of getting the grips of it now. So hopefully it should work out that I can get this nice and sharp.